As always with these handouts, be sure to try these problems on your own for a while before uh, watching this video. Only watch this, only watch this video if you get stuck on any one of these problems, um, and hopefully I'll be able to get you unstuck. So let's start with uh, number one, I guess would be a good place to start, um, finding all solutions to this equation. Uh, so as usual with really any kind of equation that has a complicated piece, and in this case, the cosine is what's gonna count as the complicated piece, you wanna start by isolating the complicated part. So let's subtract three from both sides. That's gonna give us, let me do it over here, four, cosine theta equals one minus three is negative two, then divide both sides by four. So cosine theta is minus two over four, that's minus one half, okay? And uh, so since this value, minus one half, is sort of a nice value for cosine, we know some, we know an angle that produces this value for cosine. Uh, that would be, I guess, something like two pi over three. But remember, the uh, tricky part to solving this kind of equation is finding every angle that satisfies this equation. So just, um, just taking inverse cosine, we find one solution, two pi over three, and I'm using radians, of course. Um, but we need to be sure to find every solution and of course, since the period of cosine is two pi, we can add any multiple of two pi and we'll come up with another solution for this equation. So we can add two pi times any integer. And uh, to indicate any integer here, I'm gonna put a k here. So k is any integer. Okay, but remember, cosine has some symmetry, right? So we got, this angle and uh, adding periods to it. Um, but also there's this angle down here, right? There's always, for sine and cosine, for uh, equations involving sine and cosine, there's always a symmetric solution. So for cosine, the symmetric solution is just the negative of the first solution. So that would be negative two pi over three. But then again, you can add any multiple of two pi. So plus, to pi k, and k is any integer. So this big collection of angles right here is uh, our collection of solutions for this equation. Okay, so again, pause and work on this one on your own, and if you get stuck, uh, then unpause, I guess. Okay, so once again, we're going to start out by isolating the trigonometric part. So we're gonna isolate the sine of theta. So subtract two from both sides, negative eight sine theta is minus two minus two is minus four. Divide both sides by minus eight, you get sine theta is um, one half, positive one half. Just taking inverse sine, gives you one solution, so that would be pi over six radians, but then you can add any multiple of the period of sine, which is two pi, so two pi k. But then of course, there's a symmet collection of symmetric solutions, and for sine, so we found an angle so that sine is a half, that's pi over six, and for sine, the symmetric solution is over here, like this. So that's, uh, if you think about how you can get to this spot, it's a half turn minus uh, the angle, the first solution, which was pi over six. So pi minus the, the first solution is your symmetric solution. And pi minus pi over six is five pi over six. And then of course you can add any multiple of the period, so plus two pi k. Okay, and there's our collection of solutions for this equation. Um, this is very similar to how we solved the cosine equation, but the difference is how you find the symmetric solution. Um, because sine, is, sine has a different symmetry than cosine, uh, the symmetric solution looks a little different. Okay, moving on. Okay, pause and work on this one on your own. Okay, 
so again, we're going to isolate the trigonometric part. So tangent theta equals root 3 over 3. So that, let's see. So again, we can find one solution just by using inverse tangent. An inverse tangent of root 3 over 3 is, this is the nice value of tangent that's less than 1. So that's going to be pi over 6 plus any multiple of the period of tangent. But remember, the period of tangent is pi, not 2 pi. So plus pi k. And then for tangent, there is no symmetric solution. It's sort of as if the, uh, the symmetric solutions are what make the period be pi instead of 2 pi. Right, so we're done here. So if you think about a, a unit circle, remember tangent tells you about slope. So uh, pi over 6 is this first angle here. And if you added 2 pi, you'd go around like this. But that skips the uh, angle that's pi over 6 plus pi. So it's sort of the symmetric solutions are what make the period be pi instead of 2 pi. OK. So first four positive solutions to this one. So as usual, isolate the trigonometric part. Cosine theta is 1 over 4. Okay, so that means theta is, well, now this value of cosine isn't one of the nice values. So to find a, uh, a value for theta, we really just have to use inverse cosine. We can punch this into a calculator later, but um, we're just going to get a decimal approximation. There's no way, no way around it. And then add multiples of the period, so plus 2 pi k. And then the symmetric solutions are just like before with cosine. The symmetric solutions are just the negative of the, of the first solution. So inverse cosine of 1 over 4. And then plus 2 pi k again. OK, so to get the first four positive solutions, I guess that would be inverse cosine of 1 over 4. And then the next one would be, actually, the next one is one of the symmetric solutions, but with k equals 1. So this is going to be minus cosine, inverse cosine of 1 over 4 plus 2 pi. And then the one after that is going to be one of these, but where k is 1. So inverse cosine of 1 over 4 plus 2 pi, and then uh, we'll get a symmetric solution again. So minus inverse cosine of 1 over 4 plus uh, 4 pi instead of 2 pi. OK. And if you want to have, get decimal approximations for all of these, you can punch them all into a calculator. And that's it.